So say it. Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Sufficient for me is God, and He is the best disposer of our affairs. Abdullah bin Abbas عنه, was saying this, and then he said after he said it, Qalaha Ibrahim hina ulqiya fin nar. This is what Abraham said السلام, when he was thrown into the fire. And this is what Muhammad وسلم, said when the people said to them, that the people have gathered against you, so fear them. And there's something very powerful about this because what Ibn Abbas essentially was saying that if Hasbi Allah wa Ni'm al Wakil was good enough for a Prophet of Allah when he was thrown into a fire by his father, and if Hasbi Allah wa Ni'm al Wakil was good enough for a Prophet of Allah when his own people gathered against him to kill him and his followers, then Hasbi Allah wa Ni'm al Wakil is good enough for any follower of those Prophets and any believer regardless of whatever adversity it is that they may face hasbi allah wa ni'm al wakil allah is sufficient for me i need no one else wa ni'm al wakil and he is the best disposer of my affairs i need no one else to dispose of my affairs or to control my circumstances because no one controls my circumstances except for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is something about that remembrance of allah Hasbi Allah wa ni'm al wakil. And I want you to pay attention to the ayah, the verse in which Allah says that the Prophet said, Hasbi Allah wa ni'm al wakil, as well as the believers. One of my scholars in tafsir, he said, Notice that Allah said, Those to whom the people said, the people have gathered against you. Allah described, both those who told the Prophet peace be upon him and the companions that the people have gathered against you as well as the people that they were speaking about Allah just referred to them as an-nas, people essentially to tell you that at the end of the day they're just people whether they're the hypocrites, whether they're your enemies whether they're the naysayers from within or without they're just nas, they're just people and when another Prophet of Allah, as Imam Zaid, was just speaking about Musa alayhi salam, was faced with the same doubt but from within. When his own people said, Inna la mudrakun, we're trapped, we're caught, we have nowhere to go. What do we do? And Musa alayhi salam has behind him the most vicious army under the most vicious tyrant, rather ready to massacre Musa alayhi salam and his people. And his people now doubt him and say, we're trapped, we're done. What does he say? Kalla inna ma'i rabbi sayahdeen. He said, no, no. My Lord is with me and he will guide me through this. It doesn't matter what the people are saying to me about the people. Because at the end of the day, they are people. And I am people. And Allah is still in control. And Allah will always be in control. And so long as I don't lose sight of that, then my spirituality will remain consistent. My politics will remain principled. My methodology will remain consistent. My ideology will remain coherent. My religion will remain firm. In trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't just gain perspective on how to deal with our enemies. That's the easy part. What about with our allies? You see, when a community feels as insecure as our community feels, we often throw ourselves forward to be tokenized by the first politician that's willing to serenade us with their words, even if they're still going to attack us with their policies. We're willing to go into bad alliances with people that don't care anything about us and that place all sorts of conditions on building partnerships and coalitions with us because we're afraid. And when you look to the seerah of the Prophet wasallam, even in his most vulnerable moments, he was never phased. He didn't lose sight of the ultimate goal. 
And so when a man comes to him from the tribe of Banu Amr, Ibn Sa'asa, Sa and says to the Prophet Sallallahu look, I'll support you on the condition that if you win, we inherit the power. And the Prophet Sallallahu says, no deal. When the people come to the Prophet Sallallahu and say, fine, you know what? We'll worship Allah for a day and you worship our gods for a day. Or we will worship Allah for the entire year and you worship our gods for a day. The Prophet Sallallahu says, no. I often have shared the story of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, may Allah be pleased with him, when, his, when, when he was on his way out to Abyssinia and a man, Ibn Daghina, came to him and said that a person like you, la yakhruj wa la yukhraj, should not be allowed to leave nor should he be forced out and offered Abu Bakr as-Siddiq protection in Mecca. The end of that story though is that Ibn Daghina came back to him having been affected by the complaints of the people and said to him, listen, you need to stop praying in your own courtyard. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, I will not stop praying in my courtyard. And if this is so bothersome to you, then I don't need your protection. Allah will protect me. A lot of times, we allow for people in the name of alliance to place conditions on their allyship we don't need conditional allyship. We don't need fake alliances. We don't need people to come to us and to say that so long as you don't talk about ABC and so long as you're willing to give up this, this and that, then you will be welcome into our coalition or into our partnerships. Because we need to understand that in trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our allies, in quotes, with our allies, that if Allah facilitates some people to be at our aid for a noble cause, it is still Allah that is doing the facilitating and still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is in control and still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will bring about ultimate benefit or harm. And we don't need that anymore. And we need to also recognize that here in the state of Texas, by the way, Muslims here in the state of Texas, we can remove Ted Cruz. Our community can remove Ted Cruz. We have that power. So we don't need politicians that are going to come to us and ask us to be tokens at their tables because it is far too often that you quickly go from being a token at the table to being the trash in the dumpster. We have political power if we mobilize properly with our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have the right to hold politicians that come to us soliciting our votes accountable. We have the right to stand not just for our community but for our true allies those that don't place conditions upon us. And even when we go into our coalitions and we go into our alliances, other people might have other motivations for why they are at the table and that's fine. But our motivation must remain unambiguously the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to be clear about our motivations. We have to be clear about what grounds us as we build partnerships and coalitions and alliances and we work with people for the common good. Our Prophet Sallallahu taught us how to do that. But we have to maintain that trust. As for that trust in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala with our enemies, فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Do not fear them, but fear me if you are indeed believers. Now by the way, I want to make an important distinction here. Oftentimes we conflate speaking courageously with speaking unnecessarily confrontationally. There is a way to speak the truth. There is a way to beautifully preach without being unnecessarily ugly. And so we have to learn those boundaries and learn those parameters and know when to employ a, prof a, a tone that is in accordance with a prophetic methodology for whatever that circumstance may be. We need to understand that. And we need to apply that sunnah because at the end of the day, we speak for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not out of our own, not out of our own desires and not for the sake of our own ego 
or for the sake of scoring any cheap points. So yes, employ beautiful preaching and speak the truth courageously without losing yourself. The Prophet ﷺ never lost the beautiful akhlaq that he had, the beautiful character that he had as he stood for justice. But with all of that, dear brothers and sisters, as we understand that God has the mercy to guide our enemies, we also understand that God has given us the strength to resist them. And so until and if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides them in His mercy, then we need to draw on that strength to resist them and to not be afraid of them, whoever they may be. Whatever office they may hold, Allah has given us something to ground us and something to grant us strength. And the last thing I'll mention here, dear brothers and sisters, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Hasbi Allah wa Ni'mal Wakil doesn't just give us a methodology for how to deal with our allies or how to deal with our enemies. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a methodology for how to deal with ourselves. And I want to explain that for a moment. I always found a profound beauty in this ayah. In Tansurullah Yansurkum, Wayuthabit Akdamakum. Allah mentions in the Quran that, O oh, you who believe, if you support the cause of Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will support you. But He didn't stop there. Allah also said, He will plant your feet firmly. So it's not just support the cause of God and you will be supported by God your feet will be planted firmly. What that means, dear brothers and sisters, is that you don't just gain the support of Allah. Allah inspires in you a steadfastness to stay the course. Allah brings about something in you to be able to face all of those different environments with principle out of that trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.